both of these gents won their opening round match, which means they are level at the top of the group. Winner of this match only needs a draw, and they will find themselves in the final four. Carl Sutton scratches the break. Not an ideal start. Carl can have spells with his break where he does lose that control. He does often <laughs> give the centre pockets a bit of a ride with the cue ball, but this time it's the corner. And look at this layout for an opening chance in yeah, this match. You, you, you take it, don't you? It's as good as it gets, really. Every ball's got a pocket. Yeah, you've got to play nice positional shot onto the eight ball and the yellow next to it. Be surprised if they ever think about going back to back on those two. They might, but I think it might be better just get rid of the yellow by the eight ball and then work their way back round to get on the eight. going here looks like they might leave the one by the eight ball it's absolutely fine if they land nicely on that yellow if you don't land nicely on that yellow then it can become a problem it's often the way you don't tend to play for balls next to each other sort of back to back mm. just puts a little bit of pressure on your cue ball because if it's wrong all of a sudden you're in trouble it's not, though. That's a lovely shot from Luke. And that's 1-0. I always felt like it was going to be 1-0 from the, the way the balls were laid out, but still got to go ahead and do them, take them through. That was off the chippy and Carl Sutton side of the table's break, so I don't know who will be going up first for Luke and Cole. Probably Cole, I think, going on the way they went first time, first match out. Chance for them to break and steal a march on the former champions. It will be Cole. Predominantly cut breaks. Often gets that eight ball flying. Keep an eye on it. It's quite a narrow cut break. He's, he doesn't go right the it's way to the side a of the table. One, isn't it? Yeah, he gets a lot of power through the pack yeah. as well. It's hard to generate this much power that narrow. He hits it really well. And the reason I say that, because if you're narrow on the cut break, so the cut break is that you're hitting second ball down, there's less showing the narrower you go, so the more to the middle of the table you go, the less of the ball there is to hit. And then the thinner you catch it, the less power goes through the pack. But he still manages to get a flush connection and a lot of power through. Might be something to look at. I don't know how much players experiment. A lot of players do go to the cut break when they're trying to chase the eight ball and dying moments of matches and certain situations. But do they? does the eight ball get moving more from a narrow cut break than a wide cut break? Well, over to the scientists. Yeah. There will be some who will meddle with that. I'll tell you who it's worth asking. Sean's story. He'll know. <laughs> He'll know. He will know. Just opens up the eight ball a little bit more. Played on the double purposely. Could have played for this in the corner, but it didn't quite land on the angle to do that. Wow. Rejected. Spins around the back of the pocket. Cole Bedford looks like he's seen a ghost. Oh, that's pretty tough. It's very tough. 
very, very tough. And we do see that from time to time. It's always those sort of medium pace ones that do that. It's very rare. You don't see players hammer them into the middle because they're worried about it. To be honest, that's part of the reason. But yeah, that that's not uh, not what Carl wanted to see. That's a tough one. Not that easy here for Carlos. He keeps eyeing up this yellow nearest the cushion. It must go while well, he's looking at it. Yeah, it was very, very tight. I think he was trying to play a clever shot. He's thinking it, it might go, might not. But I think in the end, he decided it probably didn't. And he's hidden the, the red at the top, or he was trying to, and the red at the bottom. But he hasn't quite got the, hit, the hide on the red at the top. It was sort of a two-way shot that he was yeah, playing. Just didn't quite get it right. No. Cole's definitely not got that one right. That's as poor a shot as we've seen from Cole all night. He can feel hard done by in the previous visit, not this time round. Be a big moment on the night that one really could. The debrief begins. How's Carl feeling? Back yourself to get on the one on the right hand side and get on the one at the top off it. He could if he wanted to. Play this yellow off the eight ball and nudge the eight ball a little bit safer, give him a bit more freedom, but then you've got to work yourself back round to get on the eight ball. So mm. is it worth it? He could play straight up for the one at the top now and leave the one on the right-hand side for last. It's never easy to play position from the one over the pocket onto the one on the right-hand side. So it wouldn't shock me to see him. He could play on it now or he could play into it now. Played into it. Yeah, lovely shot. We often talk about not moving balls if you don't have to, but it, it was one of those that if you get the cannon or anywhere near the cannon, good things can happen a lot more than the bad. It was, a, in my opinion, a good time to play that cannon. Very, very nice. Well, these two are going to take some stopping tonight. They're going to take some stopping in this competition, full stop. Cole Bedford still shook up. Oh, it's just tough, isn't it? It's it, tough. It is tough, and yes, we can. If he, if that goes in, he's he's going to win the frame off it. But he had another opportunity that he should have taken. So it's easy to, for him to point back at the end of the night and say, "Oh, that was a moment that went against us. So I got unlucky there." But he still had another chance to win the frame, so he can't draw too much attention to it because he certainly should have won the frame from his second chance. Sean at the table for the first time in the match. Feels a little bit like last year's final where we didn't see him for a set and a half. Nearly half the match played here. And Sean touches the table for the first time. Great reaction to completely miss hitting the break. <laughs> but he makes a ball. I know we've talked about you know, it's a surprise we've not yet seen Sean get his hands on a title with Ultimate. Obviously, so many semi-finals and obviously that one final. Other than obviously the pairs he's won, I'm talking about individual play here, but 
if he could ever find a consistent break, he would be winning multiple titles. Well, the thing is, his break's actually been quite consistent this year at, he, at times. When it has got flowing, this hand on the table break with a bit of top spin that he's, well, he's used for quite a little while now, it seems to be really effective for him. I think he's lost faith in it during the Players' Championship where he made the final. I think he got very frustrated with it. He just doesn't have a, a break comparable to, to some of the other guys in the, at the right at the top of the game. Yes, he can have spells where the break works, but it, it's very hot and cold. And there are times where he gets frustrated and he tries to overhit it and gets breaks like the one he just hit there. Obviously, this time he's, he's made a ball, but it was a complete miss hit. And that was his best. Just got the line, line wrong a little bit there, more than the pace. He was trying to be a little bit higher up the table. Obviously, slightly overhit as well. Might have to be a double now. Oh, we're digging deep now. Yeah, he decided he didn't like the double. The one he was on the cushion, not the one he just played that didn't double. Because he could he felt he could work his way back round to it, but he's got to hit a good shot here. Oh he has, he has. That's just a lovely shot. He's actually been a fraction, and a fraction unfortunate, because he, he's just gone that turn past the straight on it, so he can't just stun it in and take the his medicine on the eight ball. He has to actually play a shot with the cue ball here. I've tried to sort of play it on the straight. But if he makes that, then the cue ball goes a couple more turns to the left, and he gets danger of being behind the red. Well, that was tougher than it yeah. deserved to be. I would say. And Luke Sanji's can mop up here. Eight minutes left. Keep an eye on that clock. Delicate shot into the middle, one that just needs a little bit of attention. Doesn't have to do anything with the cue ball. Always a big factor in playing those sorts of shots. for playing cheerleader out there, cheering on every shot. Yeah, he will do that. for watch, especially for Sean Chipperfield. Cole Bedford pumped up. Luke Sanchez does his job and does it very well. Not often these two are behind on Monday nights. Yeah, certainly got plenty to think about, haven't they? Yeah, Sean Chipperfield a roll with the cue ball really away from being out there. And what would have been a lovely, lovely finish as well. But those are the brutal margins that these players can operate under at times. They need a little bit of luck. Yeah, look how narrow he is. We talked about it on his last break. A lot of players are six inches further left when they play the cut break. And this time he doesn't hit it particularly well. But look at the layout. 
messy. Yeah, really wanted that one to drop in over the right centre pocket, but actually, I'm not sure it's too much of a problem that it hasn't, because this first shot what? is not easy. This finish is not easy. I think yellows are a chance. Yellow into the right centre. Is he? Yeah, and he's got the angle here, so he's going to pop the yellow and just top in and just try and create some separation in the other two yellows. It's, it's far from easy. I mean, the, going into the yellows is, is, is OK, but it's, it's far from easy in terms of actually opening them up. Oh, I tried to. He decided that brute force was the way. That you couldn't open them up with control. He had to get separation in them. And what happens is when you play with that much force, the cue ball, it throws wide then the top spin takes, so it sort of arcs around the cluster. Yeah, and the reason for that, physics fans, is the cue ball is smaller yeah. than the object ball, an English eight ball. It's the only cue sport where that happens. And because it's smaller, when a cue ball hits an object ball at pace, it actually, the impact of it just stops and actually throws backwards before all the spin can then take and start propelling it forward. And that velocity, it's a sensation that we often see as part of the art of this game is judging shots like that. Something that snooker players who we've spoken to often struggle with when they maybe first start playing pool, never played it before. It's the keyboard reacts so differently. It's because of the weight. They played a good safety shot though in response, but they won't get in on the second opportunity either and reds are only opening up here. Keep an eye on the clock, three minutes left. There's some problems still for a while here on both colour sets. Cole should try and keep this as tight as he possibly can. Yeah, get another red in on that yellow. Sean and Carl, they still have time to play safe. You get the sense Sean wants to be aggressive here, but they could play a safety opening up the yellow at the bottom. Decides to try and develop it. Just shaves it. Got a shot. Deserved a little bit better, if we're being honest there. They have still got time to play that safety if they want to, with two minutes on the clock. They've got time for maybe one. Oh, <laughs> Sean's having none of it. That's brilliant. And they've got a chance to get out now. It's just such an incredible shot. <laughs> oh, just slightly got it wrong there. Didn't want to get too straight on this. Wanted angle, but he's asking a lot of Sean Chipperfield right now. Just too much. Oh, Luke just catches Cole and said it's me to play. Cole's getting down on the shot. That would have cost him. You can't play out of turn. Now edging closer. Yeah, we don't have to worry about the finish here. Just keep potting balls. The, well, Cole's actually just left Luke just a little off here. Certainly making him think. So I think he has to nip this. Oh, that was close. And he's missed it anyway. I think they'll almost not even worry about the foul. Or the yeah, they're just going to play. Just in time, but yeah. The, the reason he played it the way he did and it was putting pressure on was because it was a natural in off. The red was making it a big pocket. Oh, well, 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 well. 35 seconds on the watch, and we are Desmond in the ultimate Paul Pears Cup. Sutton and Sanji's, or rather Bedford and Sanji's, run aground, and Sutton and Chipperfield are there to profit. 
yeah, if he just, this is the one, if he just rolls it in, Kubel's tracking to the right center and obviously he's playing the big pocket. So he felt he had to screw it on and off and just add it to the tariff of the shot. And obviously it was an edgy shot anyway, because if that goes in, they win the, they win the match. And if ever you needed a 35 second break in clearance, oh, this Sean is... Chipperfield would be pretty much at the top of your list. You can see by his demeanor around the table, Chippy is ticking and he fancies this. He's one of the few players in the world that you'd be saying, yeah. I mean, there are, it, we've seen He'd it. He'd probably be the one you'd put at the front of the key. He would be my number one. I mean, I, I know Gareth has the record and, you know, he's he's quite rightly proud of it. You know, he, but Chippy is the quickest player in the game. Needs a ball. Needs a ball. Well, Cole Bedford, they call him chaos. Can he do it? They're all there. Luke tried to get involved and play a shot himself. Calls the foul. <laughs> Chippy sprints to the table. 19 seconds. Don't think he'll quite have the time, even for Sean Chipperfield. Kubel just running too much, and he knows. So they'll shake hands on a 2-2. Two -two. <laughs> and there you have it. Well, there is still plenty to play for this evening. Both of these pairs can still qualify. It's still in their own hands.